Hello. Welcome to outside. Hope it's not too windy or anything. Um, everyone else is asleep in the house, so I thought I would get out and film. I got lots in my brain, so it's always best to just get them out. Um, how are you? How is everyone else doing? We're coping is probably the best word. It's so cold at the moment. The temperature proper dropped. Um, oh, that's going right through my trousers. Um, yeah, it's proper winter now. It's crazy. Um, but yeah. Um, it's just been quite hard. Uh, we we did receive our, our GoFundMe payment recently, um, like the other day, but then I had to put like all of it back into my rent money, so I don't actually have anything. <laughs> Um, but I'm glad at least now that I'm not, like, short on rent, but still just no power, no nothing, as per usual, though. I just, I've just not been great, not been doing very well past few days, week, weeks, maybe been very down very suicidal very wobbly I guess I wanted to show you my new gloves that I made let's see if we can oh nice um I wonder if you can hear me all right with that if I can just leave it there <laughs> Um, but yeah, I wanted to show my gloves that I made. This took um, too too long. I have made a pair of gloves before, but I don't know why. I made one prototype and it was too big. I tried a different pattern and struggled with that. Um, then tried this pattern. And I really like this pattern, the way it makes these bumps. But it was like the fourth or fifth iteration of trying to make just a simple pair of gloves. But yeah, um, it, they are based on this new thing that's come out. I'm very obsessed with like games and um, well, indie game lore, indie um, ARG things, you know, indie projects that are fucking quirky. That's kind of my special interest in life. Um, so yeah, th these are based off of the amazing digital circus. If you haven't seen it, I really, really recommend it. It's actually crazy. Um, but yeah, these are based off of the main character in that. She is a jester and um, she has these, they're kind of like rounded. They're like 3D jester gloves. Do you know what I mean? But we decided to simplify them and make them into cuffs. And yeah, she has one red, one blue. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna take this back because I don't know what to do with my hands. Um. Yeah. I don't know. It's just getting bad again. And I've just been thinking a lot, you know. Like. It's really hard when you're living paycheck to paycheck and you you know can't get a job because everyone in the country is desperate for jobs so even an able-bodied person is struggling to find work you know oh you know my partner up in London can't find a single job because of how hard it is to find jobs at the moment so can't find a job 
especially wouldn't be able to find a job that could accommodate my disability or mental health like I just feel so stuck and trapped and I don't know it's I was looking back recently on things you know and I was hoping that this video diary would show that I was getting better you know I'd be able to see the progress I'd be able to see the communication increase or whatever but I don't know it feels like I've kind of gone worse I feel like I'm high masking all the time I'm never aware of switching nobody else around me is aware of switching because they just hide like as much as living in our old flat was horrible and I've clearly gotten rose tinted goggles over it it did feel safer mentally you know physically this one is safer we have a lock on the door our window won't blow off the, the house isn't literally leaking or have mushrooms growing out of the wall do you know what I mean like our old flat was literally falling apart and had mushrooms growing out the wall but at least there I was safe enough to switch I felt safe enough to be to let go you know I've always had a fear of switching and I've always had this fear of what will happen when I'm gone and when I black out and I don't know it just it, I thought that getting into a better place would make me better but I think getting into a place with a worse person has made me worse and it's hard it's hard when you're not in it and you are it's hard when you don't understand you know she's she's all or nothing she's mimicking your every moment every sound laughing at stuff that she doesn't understand you know I'll laugh at something on my phone and she'll laugh just to copy me and I'll be like what are you laughing at and she just will bullshit me and lie to my face and try and gaslight me that I am the one who's stupid for picking up that she copied me or you know she, she I'll say something like oh that's not right it's not spelt that way or no the sky is blue or no blah 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 you know I'll say something that's a fact and she'll look at me like I've murdered somebody and then gaslight me into thinking I'm wrong like I'll go no a hundred pennies make a pound and she'll go no they don't you're wrong and I'm like I can count I know what's right and then if I try and call her out if I try and call anybody out I just get screamed at you know and it's this if I ask her hey could you do some dishes it's your only chore she looks at me like and then like I'll say oh um it's okay whenever whenever you're ready whenever you have time it's all right and she'll go and it's like why the fuck do I deserve that why the fuck do I deserve to get treated like shit all the time you know, I do her laundry, I literally clean all of her clothes and underwear, I fold them up all nicely and put them on her bed because I like the presentation, you know, I f put them all neatly on her bed and then I ask for a cup to be able to get a drink and she doesn't wash it. Yesterday I had to wash my own dishes, I had to cook my own dinner, cook her dinner, do everything, I do everything in the house. Like, there's such double standards it, in the whole time I think this constant mimicking and copying and and it's not just like oh I've gotten a blue hat so she got a blue hat you know it's the if toast comes out and he is speaking with his natural accent that comes out or speaking with his mannerisms you know he's learnt these mannerisms from local chavs in our area you know I grew up in a very chavy area and he learned this kind of mentality from that and as soon as as soon as he starts talking and he's like yeah nah fam fuck off nah fam nah 
she's copying it. She's like, what fam? What do you want? Fuck off. And it's like, or if any of the children, any of the altars, the child altars come out and they're like, no, or whatever, you know, they start talking in their kid-like voices and she starts going, yeah, yeah. And like mimicking and it's like who how is the altar supposed to feel comfortable supposed to feel welcome if they're just taking the piss out of because it doesn't feel like a a mirror to make them feel comfortable it, it feels like a copy a, 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 a mirroring to make them feel stupid or something i don't know like obviously i just know how they feel i don't know what happens i don't know anything else i just know that they all are like, no, I'm not coming out. And I know that for a fact because like, I think especially, it's especially noticeable with the people who have accents, you know, like Chloe and Raya and a lot of them, you know, Jade, they, not Jade, Jane, they will, um, they can blend as me, do you know what I mean? They might have slight mannerisms that are different, but they're very good at passing as me, as the host, you know, especially writer, that's kind of her job. Um, but then there's people like Tracy, who has such a thick accent, and they just haven't. I haven't seen them in months. Last time I saw Tracy was when I cut all my hair off. And it just, it, it's just been really getting to me that every single thing, I constantly am splitting and having these moments. Cause like, yeah, we're diagnosed with BPD and we should really try and recognize that. And like actually listen to that. I think for the longest time we kind of went, nah, he's wrong, he's lying. But then we fucking split or <laughs> have these moments of complete BPD-ness and you're like, well, actually, they might be right. And, yeah, it's like... When I tried to move to my grandma's, when I was trying college, it all went so wrong. I was getting it from every angle. She was just shut off and excluding me and she just would not speak to me would not do any of her chores would not do anything and then when you and it's not even like she's ill or can like i should be concerned you know because i am concerned i do get concerned when she disappears for three weeks into her bed and it's not like she's sat in her bedroom doing her stuff doing whatever she wants she's laid in bed in the dark no curtains open, no light on, in the dark, on TikTok, 12 hours a day. And then I go in and I'm like, are you all right? What's wrong? And she's just, eh. Eh, I don't know, I just feel like it, lol. Eh, I just feel like it. And it's like, it, if you were depressed or something, you know, I'd come in and I'd say, are you okay? And, you, and she'd say like, no, I'm not feeling great. Or even if she's like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm fine. I would know something was wrong, but she's like, yeah, banter, innit? It's fucking lols. I don't know, I just felt like it. I just felt like laying in bed for four weeks because I just can't be ass. And it's like, you've got chores to do. You have a roommate, you have responsibilities. Do you not give a fuck about me? And it's clear that she doesn't give a fuck about me. She only ever gives a fuck about herself. She only cares that I'm with her, so she's not alone. And also it's the manipulation, you know, I'm 26, I have a long-term partner I've been with for almost six years now, and I do not live with them. I do not live near them, because my roommate guilts me so fucking much that if I leave, I'm abandoning her. She constantly says how I would be abandoning her and how I can't leave her and how I can't let leave her on her own. And, oh, you're going to take me with you, right? We can't split up the cats. No, I'm coming with you. It's like she expects to be sat there next to me when I'm nine months pregnant. Do you know? Like, I'll be sat there. 
nine months fucking pregnant. My partner in London. And she's still, like, she's living with me. Like, she expects to be there every second of the day. Every second of the way. Like, does she still expect us to be living together but I'm married? It's like, it's the controlling words in which she says, she's like, you're not going to leave me, are you? And it's like, I should have a right. I'm 26. I should be able to up and leave if I fucking want to. But she guilts me so much. She's made it so... Like, the idea of me going up to London or me moving somewhere closer to Casey is god forbid unless I take her with me but even then she wants to stay in Plymouth so how dare I leave like even the idea of going home she couldn't take you know the fact that last year or the, the year before whenever the whole thing with me and grandma she was going she started doing this again and shutting me out and making my life hell so I tried to leave and put myself in an abusive situation again just so I wouldn't have to be with her but the abusive situation was too fucking much and I had and I was shoved back there because being there and being mentally fucked with every day was better than being back in that abusive situation but it's like I don't know how much of it I can take because it's like it's so controlling it's everything I cook every day I clean every day I do everything for everyone every fucking day And people forget that I'm the disabled one. I should not be the one walking to the shop every day for people. I should not be the one cooking, standing up and cooking every fucking day for people. Sure, I will cook for people. And I like like cooking and I like doing the dinner or whatever. But why does it fall on me every single day? They come out, they look at me and go, what's for dinner? And I turn around and go, I'm not your mother. There's a phrase on TikTok lately that's been kind of freaking me out. Um, well, it's just been in my head constantly. And it's, if he wanted to, he would. And it's about men, and about boyfriends, and about um, that if they wanted to make an effort, they would. So, yeah, I've been, I changed the pronoun so then it could apply to anybody. And it's, it's just simple. As simple as that. If they wanted to, they would. I asked Casey for a boo basket. I love Halloween. Didn't get one. No problem. If they wanted to, they would have. They didn't want to. Do you know what I mean? It's like, if she wanted to do the dishes and help me out and get, and wash some cups for me so that I could have a drink, like I asked, she would. But she doesn't want to, which means she doesn't care. If she wanted to put her laundry out for me to help me out and not make me ask her every single time, she would, but she doesn't. It's like yesterday, I was really aching, my legs were hurting, I was rolling around, almost crying because I'm sick of the fucking pain. Casey's like, what is it? Is it your back? I said, no, it's my legs. So they got cream and gave me a little massage. If they wanted to, they would. They wanted to help me. They wanted to give me something. They wanted to give me that moment and help me. So they did. Do you see what I'm saying? It's like, I'm trying not to take it so personally when these things happen. When I am so rejected and so used and all this sort of shit. It, it's just simple. If they wanted to, they would. And, yeah like i'm just i'm sick of not being able to survive every month mentally financially health wise like it's freezing right now we have no money and no power no can't eat and i'm just sick of it and i wish it wasn't such a hard thing to say i'm going home i'm going to my mum's she would fucking guilt me and manipulate me and gaslight me and guilt trip me until I sub- till I submit and say fine Zeph we'll move in together it's like why should I have to put up with somebody who just shuts off and d- it just leaves me to my own devices f- and just doesn't bother you know and like I said if it was something like if she was sick 
and she was in bed all day, then that's that's fine. I'd look after her. If she was having a bit of a wobbly one, a mental health one, I would look after her. I'd encourage her to get out. I would say, come watch something with us. But it's the fact that she's like, I just can't be asked. I just can't be asked to talk to you today. I just can't be asked to be social. I just can't be asked to do any of my chores and my responsibilities. So fuck you, you do them. I have to feed the cats. I have to do the dishes. I have to do everything, even though it's supposed to be split chores. I don't know. I just, I see videos of me or anyone in my system back in the flat. And we were so much healthier stressed sure but healthier than we are now the communication was so much better everything was so much better how has living with one person made me so ill this person i can't seem to escape from and i'm not even fucking dating her i don't get fuck all out of it i don't get comfort i don't get love i don't get sex i don't get fucking anything from her so what is the point what is the fucking point it's just, it's just this, this, this kind little part of me that's like, no, don't hurt them. No, no, you don't want to hurt them. You don't want to be that person that hurts them. But I'm sick of it. I'm, it's literally killing me. Every day now when something happens, I start splitting and then I want to fucking die. I literally want to take every single medication that I own and fucking end it. Just because of my roommate. With the constant head games and head fuck and gaslighting and lying and fucking with me yeah I don't know I just I saw a clip of me and Jess and Axos and everybody at the sleepover and my vlog, going to see them all. And I just miss them. I just miss everything. Everything has gone. I don't have this community anymore. I don't have my friends anymore. I don't know, it's just crazy how one person can fuck up your online life and one person can fuck up your inside life or your home life to the point where you just don't have anything to live for. Because <laughs> I don't. I don't. My channel's getting soft block. I don't. I get hate comments beyond belief. I don't have the community, the support, the friends. I haven't seen Jess in two years. You know, and I try, I try to be a good person. I try to look out for my friends. You know, and I look out for one friend and lose another. I try to look out for these friends and lose their trust. I just, I try to do the right thing and always fuck it up yeah